Welcome everyone, I'm Ricky from Tech Talk and today we're taking a very special look at the Samsung Galaxy S10 5G and today's very powerful video talking about the accessibility features you're going to find on this device and throughout the S10 range. How do you know this is an S10 5G? Well if you're in a 5G area you're going to get 5G up here instead of 4G and also you get an extra camera lens on the back which is a time of flight sensor. But more about that in my review but let's go through the accessibility settings today. What I'm going to do first of all is make sure the volume is all the way up so you can hear the voice assistant when using that and if you press and hold both volume keys together voice assistant on one you my home so you've got voice assistant is now on and available to use so you can change the levels of volume still as well if you want to she's fine volume, to volume 100 percent so it's now hidden we can go through our one ui home here home. messages for notifications internet camera custom Current location, Princess Risborough, current temperature 18 degree, mostly cloudy, weather, updated 24 9th 1332, double tap for more information. So it highlights everything to me that's highlighted in that box, tells me everything, gives me the options as well, what I need to do then to carry on. Using two fingers, swipe across, you can swipe across all the way to your Bixby home here, tells you your home. Page one of two default page. You can also highlight up here at the top. 1337, one UI home, battery 98%. So it will tell you everything. Also, this will read back multiple different things for you when you're in settings as well. Wherever you are on your device, it will help. Use two fingers. App screen, page one of two. Then use two fingers again. Page two of two. It lets you know. Home button, double tap to activate. Home screen, page one of two default page. So that was the voice assistant that we find on our device, and that can be turned on and off in settings as well as using the volume controls here. But with the apparent performance behind the S10 5G, this will run so smoothly and you won't have any issues. To turn off, use them volume controls buttons again. Voice assistant off. It will let you know the voice assistant is off. So let's carry on and go through more of the settings. So swipe up, we're in our applications here. You can also search for this as well but we're gonna go into settings. In settings, scroll all the way down and you have accessibility here. Click on accessibility and it's split into different sections which I really find really helpful. So no matter your ability, your ability might be visual impaired like myself or you might be hearing impaired, you might have dexterity and interaction sort of condition. So you might need to go into different settings to change them. But Samsung and the One UI system here splits it into ideal nice little categories, which I think is really helpful. So starting off at the top is the screen Reader. So you've got the voice assistant, which we went through. It does offer you a tutorial as well. So once toggled on, it will give you a tutorial and you can go through the tutorial options. Underneath that, then you have settings. You have text to speech option as well that you can toggle on. This can change your speech rate and your pitch and you can test it. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. And then you can change that to make that a lot faster. Of speech in English. So some people are able to use that. They can even go even faster than that as well. You can hit reset here and it will reset back to default. You've got Verbalocity. You've got Shake for continuous reading. You've got Speak Your Passwords. You can read Caller ID out aloud. So if someone was calling me, I can read it out aloud. That helps. The vibration feedback option is in here as well. Sound feedback. Focus on speech audio. Focus indicator. You've got single tap activation. As well, you have loads of different settings in here. Loads of different options that you can go through and actually change and adjust. A lot more than what you're going to find on a normal talkback option where you see talkback on other Android devices. This is more in depth and really well put together from Samsung and of course Google that they've worked together with to bring all these settings together. So coming back here. So that was voice assistant and I do recommend using that if you do need it. The next option we're going to go into is visibility enhancement. So inside here you have a high contrast theme. That's your first option. So we've got none. If we select number one here it will take me into the Samsung store where you can download the theme of course it is for free and it shows you little previews here of what it will look like you can tap to make it bigger and again this just depends what's best for your eyesight and what's best for your condition also they do have another option also people will upload themes anyway and you can change and adjust the themes depending on you as well but Samsung do come pre-installed with a couple of different options there that you can download 
Really impressed to see that straight away. You then have high contrast fonts, so you can toggle this on, hit OK. So what high contrast font does is make it a black text on a white background, whereas I prefer it the other way around. So if I toggle this off, it's gonna go back to that dark mode. I prefer white text on a black background. You've got high contrast keyboard. So inside here, you can change and adjust. So if we toggle on here, you can use any one of these, making it really easy and simple to do as well. Whatever one's best for you that you can choose from inside here. Nice that Samsung take the effort and put more options in. Show button shapes, I'm gonna toggle this on, and that you'll notice that slightly changes once that's toggled on or off. You then have negative colors. So if I toggle this on, I'm gonna hit OK, because this is different to dark mode. So if I come home now, you'll see it's all negative colors. But if we go back here, go back into here, turn this off, there you go. Going back home, you'll see it's a standard. It's only the menu options that turn into the dark mode here, making it easier for you to use. Again, it all depends on your choice. Again, coming to choice, this is where Samsung are really key and really striving forward. So you have color adjust, so you can turn this on and you can go through any one of these options to choose from. You also have a color panel as well. So you can really change and adjust this depending on your options. Underneath that is a color lens. Again, you can toggle this on. You can go through a color lens depending on your eyesight and depending on what's easier for you to read. Again, coming home, you'll see there's a slight tinge over the display there and hopefully it's bringing it up with the lighting that I have here. So let's go back. We're gonna to toggle this off and it's gonna to reset to my preferred option. I don't want to say normal. Underneath that is remove animations. So you can remove animations if you so wish to. So what I mean by this is when you actually press this, toggle it on, it'll just toggle it on. There's no flashiness of a like a swipe over. Moving down, you did see quickly there magnify a window. So you have a window that you can manipulate and move around. Also, you can change the size, you can lock it into place, and also you can cancel it out. So that's a really nice option there if you just want to have a little window to tap on and actually then change or adjust. Coming into here, most of these options have deeper settings as well. So this is a quick overview, but always jump in and delve in and look at the settings. I'm trying to show as much as I can, actually keeping it under an hour long, because there are so many settings on here. So you have magnify size, you have horizontal focus lock as well, you have follow typing focus, so different options become available to you. Then you have magnification. So you have triple tap screen magnify. So if we turn this on, one, two, three, three quick taps. And with this beautiful S AMOLED panel here, it really zooms in and you can just see how crisp and clean that text is still at that large size. One, two, three to come back. There's also another option, one, two, three, hold on the third one. That will zoom in for you. It's sort of saved to the sort of highest zoom it can go. Maneuver around release with one finger and it jumps back for you. A really good magnify option there. Then there's tap button to magnify. So we turn this on here, you're gonna get a new little accessibility man down here at the bottom, hello. Tap him, tap here, there we go. We're now zoomed in, you can use two fingers as well to pinch and zoom, maneuver your way around even with one finger, I think with two it just seems a little bit easier but then just tap down here back to standard. Two great ways of magnification there on your device. Underneath that, you've got large mouse or touchpad pointer. So you can use a mouse or a touchpad pointer to manipulate your way around your device. One of my favorite options to see here is font size and font style. So you've got style as well, and you've got the size. As you can see, mine is relatively big here and it just makes it so much easier for me to use. Also, you have bold text, making it a little bit more easier as well to read. And finally at the bottom, you've got screen zoom. So what screen zoom will do is zoom in on the whole of your display. Now, as you can see, it makes it a lot easier to read and that's a really helpful thing to do here. Three different options. So you've got in the center, you've got even larger, and then you can go back to its default option. So that was only just one section from Samsung and that was really impressive. The next one is hearing enhancements. So inside here, you have sound detectors. Sound detectors is really good. You have one for baby crying. So this will try and detect if you have a baby in the house and will detect if a baby is crying. The next one is a doorbell detector. This will detect if you have a doorbell and then will let you know if you're a little bit hard of hearing or if you struggle with your hearing, Two really good options here, especially with a baby crying, that could be really helpful for you to have a, 
more independent life and be a little bit less worried if you're not gonna hear your baby cry. Underneath that, you've got mute all sounds. Sometimes people turn this off because if they're hard of hearing or they have no hearing, what's the point of having your phone going off all the time? Hearing aid support is a great option here and I'm really pleased to see that's on here. You also have the option to change the left-right sound balance as well if you need to, if it's more helpful for you. You also have the ability of mono audio, so it's a single channel. And underneath here, you have Samsung subtitles or Google subtitles. So if you go into either of these, you can change and adjust depending on how it looks, the font, the size, just making it so much yours and actually customizing it to the way you want it to be. Again, this will be the same in Google, once selected in Google, pretty standard that we've seen on previous options of devices. And finally at the bottom, you've got speech to text. So what this does is a live transcribe and it will try and say everything that I have said, or it tries its best. Be better with someone that is speaking a little bit more clearly, as I thought I was trying to in the video. Again, in this hearing section here, really nice. Again, with the one UI, you can pull it down and use it one-handed with you no matter wherever you want to sort of use your device. Again, a great amount of settings here, making it so easy for anyone with any ability to actually use their device. Underneath that is interaction and dexterity. So inside here, you've got universal switch. This is one of my favorite sort of options that I'm gonna see on accessibility, and I do want to bring it on the channel. So what this does is allow switch and interaction devices with your smartphone, as you can see in this image here, they're actually manipulating their way around their device using a switch. They can still use this fantastic device from Samsung, but actually just interact with it in a little bit of a different way. It shows you different motions here, and you can get different options depending on what you want to do, which is really helpful. And again, you can set up your universal switch there if you so want to. I do recommend really taking a deep look at that one because it's a really interesting option to have on a smartphone and it's really improved over the last couple of years. The next option is assistant menu. So if I turn this on here, again, you have loads of different options that you can go through and change. So you have assistant menu, you have assistant plus, single tap to swipe, just making it easier, transparency, loads of different options that you can go through, customize this device to make it your own, no matter your ability, which is really good. Underneath that is click after pointer stops moving. Remember that option for a mouse pointer or touchpad pointer? This is the option that you can use here. Again, you can change and adjust how quickly it responds. Answering and ending calls, you have different options here. Read caller names aloud, press volume up to answer, answer automatically and press power key to end. So you have different options there to use. Underneath that is interaction control. And as it shows here, it blocks certain things that you cannot do with your device. So if you want someone to stay focused on one thing or one app, you'll turn this on and then actually draw a pattern where they can actually use that area of the screen only. A really interesting feature, I've seen this before as well, it sort of locks people out, say it's children, and you don't want them to touch your notification bar, you don't want them to make phone calls, but you want them to just use an application without coming out that application all the time. This is the option for you. Again, very good to go through, test out, and again, it depends what options you want to use. You have touch and hold delay, so you have different options here for touch and hold delay. So you have short, medium, long, and one thing I do like here with Samsung, this is quite new, I haven't seen this before, is a custom length time. You've got tap duration as well down here. So you have different duration that you can set. And finally at the bottom, ignore repeated touches. So when you actually repeat touch your device in different locations, it will only actually pick up the main one that you want it to use. Again, a nice amount of settings in there. And Samsung are one of the best at focusing on this section. These two top sections, majority of everyone focuses on, this is quite an improved section for Samsung. And down here at the bottom, you've got advanced settings. So inside here, power and volume up keys. So you can set it to do something if you so want it to. You have your volume up and down keys. Again, this is set to voice assistant and you can change and adjust which option you want it to do. Just up to you what you want. Flash notifications, if you want to have flash notifications, the LED flash on the back will flash up for you and let you know. Helpful if you are visually impaired. And also if you're deaf, you're not gonna hear your device, the flash notification you'll be able to see. Notification reminders, always helpful if you have loads of notifications or there's one key one that you need to keep updated with. And finally at the bottom, you've got voice labels, right voice labels for NFC tags. So really interested in the amount of settings that you're gonna find on here. Also at the bottom, you've got installed services. So if you've got any other services, 
you install them down here and it'll be in your accessibility section. So that's really impressive with the amount of settings that we find in there. There's one other section that I just want to show you and that is display as they do hide some things up here as well. So inside here, you've got your brightness. At the moment it's set on full brightness, but you can really change this if you so want to, to the point of where you can't even see your display. Obviously when it goes into the orange line, that means it's very bright and potentially you don't want to look at it for a long time. You've got adaptive brightness. This is where it's going to automatically change depending where you are and what the light source is around you. You've got blue light filter, so you can turn this on and as you'll notice, it will start to change. You can go in here, modify this option. A lot of these settings you can tap on and actually modify as well. The one mode that I really like is night mode here. So if we toggle this off, so it becomes, like I said, a black text on a white background and it demonstrates what it does, where it automatically changes for you. But I actually prefer it all the time. You can set it to schedule if you so want to, but I prefer it so much more because it's just so easy to actually use. Then you have screen mode here, so you can have neutral or vivid. You have some presets as well that you can see the differences between. My eyesight can't really see the differences, but you can actually change the color of the hue as well if you want it slightly warmer or slightly cooler in temperature color. Really nice amount of settings for the display here. So you have font size and style again in this one, really nice, but at least it's added into accessibility. You then have screen zoom, which we've shown you before as well. Screen resolution as well, it's set to the best resolution as I wanted to experience the best resolution. Come as standard as FHD+, but this is the best option here. It will take up your battery, so please bear that in mind. You can actually set it to adaptive display as well, so it will change automatically. You've got your home screen here, how you want your home screen set up. Loads of different customized options. You then have your edge screen, so if you don't know the S10 series of devices, the S10 Plus and the S10 Plus 5G have this edge screen. I think the S10 as well also has it, where you have this edge display that you can change and adjust and modify what you want to do. And then obviously you've got the wraparound glow system of light for notifications, again, can be quite helpful. Underneath that, you have easy mode so we toggle easy mode on we're going to hit apply so when going home very simple interface of your device most of the apps have been taken away it's just so much easier to use this interface and so much more basic and more of an understanding for people to use so coming in here you've got your icons are a lot larger and a lot more easier to actually use so let's go back and we're going to turn easy mode off so we're back into standard we need to just hit apply again there we go that's back to our standard option you then have your navigation bar so down here at the bottom you can choose the different options that you want you have full screen gestures you can change the layouts or i've just kept it as standard at the moment I would normally use this, but with this option, you won't get some of the accessibility features down here at the bottom corner using that figure because you haven't got them controls there to use. So I keep it pretty much standard just for when I'm using accessibility features. Underneath that, you've got accidental touch protection. Again, this is that multi-touch if you're touching in multiple different ways. Touch sensitivity, you can change there as well. You can add a screensaver if you want to. And down here at the bottom, you've got a couple of other options, but you have got that visibility enhancement so you can jump to. Your always on display as well, if you want an always on display, helps you keep your display on and then you'll get sort of notifications like this when it comes up. So there we go. I've got my time, I've got my date, and then I've got some notification information here. But if I turn this on, quick tap on my thumb, should take me back home. Take me back home and let's talk about the accessibility features that we had there. Really impressed with the amount of settings that are on this device, which is really incredible from Samsung. As always, should never fault them. I've never experienced any issues. Really impressed for the different categories that they have for different abilities. So you might have a hearing ability, you might have a interaction ability, you might be like myself having a visual ability. They cater for everyone, they really do. And it's really impressive to see all them options on here. If you have any questions or any queries, please drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to help. While you're down there, please give the video a like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe and ring that notification bell to stay updated with all of my latest videos. For me, Ricky and the S10 5 I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.